Good afternoon, everyone. Come on and stand with us. seated 
please watch our screen for the uh, announcements as the ushers welcome come down. Welcome to Bayou Blue Assembly. Refined Marriage Ministry will be restarting soon on April 7th. If you're interested, please sign up with Patrick and Sonia Vega. It's time for our monthly move. What's the move? Saturday, March 26th at Mulberry Park. Join us for Cabbage Ball and Picnic. Bring your own food. Can't wait to see you there. For more information, contact Pastor Dylan. Covenant Church will be hosting an Aspire Women's event Friday, April 29th. We are inviting our ladies to join our sisters for a night of laughter, learning, and music. Tickets are on sale now starting at $25 and will be $30 at the door. To purchase tickets, you can visit our church website and click on the banner or go to AspireWomensEvents.com. It's that time again. Join us for our Kids Camp meeting Sunday, March 27th for ages 7 through 10. We can't wait to see you there. Our annual church business meeting will be held here at Covenant Monday, March 28th at 7 p.m. We ask that all members attend as we discuss updates and new things going on for the church. All right, that's what's happening. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray over this offering? Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. Thank you, Lord, that we can come into this house and worship you once again. Lord, we pray over this offering today that it that you will just bless the gift and the giver today, God, that it will further the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray for those who are sick, Lord. We pray that you will touch them. We pray over Talisa today, touch her body, God, healing in her body, we pray, because you are the great physician, and we know that your healing is for your people. And we pray over Neil today. We pray that you will touch him and heal his body. By your stripes, we claim healing. And I know there's many others, Father. We just pray for those who need healing in their bodies, Father. We pray for the quick family. We pray for comfort and peace for our Bayou Blue family also. As we go through this week, Lord, we know that you're still in control. And we know that you still sit on your throne. And we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As they pass their, the offering, uh, the funeral service for our sweet little Megan will be here Wednesday. They're allowing us to have it here Wednesday at 11 o'clock. The wake will be from 9 a.m. to 11 o'clock. So it's very sweet of them for letting us use their building. And uh, just don't remember, don't forget, women, we're trying to get back. And we, we decided just to join uh, with their women's conference that they're having. So go online and register to come out to that. And just continue to pray for our sister Talisa and Packy's brother Neil. He is running fever now. So just keep praying for him. He's still in ICU and still needs a miracle. Talisa still needs a miracle. And just continue to pray for the quick family as we navigate through this. And don't forget our, our annual church business meeting. We are not voting on any new board members because of the process that we're in, but please come and you will have all the information. They'll they'll be giving you lots of information of where we're at and why our where we're at in our roof and why we're not continuing on and all those things, right? Stand with us, turn around and greet someone this morning, just love this afternoon. Love on them. <laughs> Give them a high five or something. You know, I always turn to this song right here. This is my one of my comfort songs. Bowser. When peace like the river attendeth my way when so
can I say it is well when my voice can barely speak? How can I sing you a song in the midst of suffering? Jesus, will you meet me here? Let your peace wash over me. Cause I need you now more than ever. Teach my soul to sing. My God is still in control. And still he reigns on his throne. Though mountains may tremble and sea billows go, I'll sing it is well with my soul. My God is still in control. First
that God is still in control and still he reigns on his throne though mountains may tremble and sea billows roll i'll sing it is well with my soul my god is still in control so thankful that we have a church we have a church family we're family here if you're a part of Bayou Blue Assembly you're family no matter where you go this little girl is not little she's a Bayou Blue family even though you're not going to see her again after today for a little while because she moved to Colorado but when she's here I said, please come sing with me. So we're going to sing an older song. But one that I needed, I guess, today. And God knew. Quien puede satisfacer mi ser como tú? Quien puede amarme, darme consuelo como tú. Quien pudiera ser más verdadero y fiel. Quien puede satisfacer, quien puede satisfacer como tú. There is a fountain yes, it is. Who is a king it's victorioso. Victorious warrior And Lord of everything yes, My rock, my shelter yes, My very own Blessed Redeemer Who is a king? He's victorious. 
Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your grace, for your peace, Lord God, in the middle of a storm. Father God, I thank you that when I don't know what to do, oh, that, Lord God, I can just hold on to the hem of your garment, and I can know that, Lord God, virtue will flow, that wisdom will flow, that, Lord God, peace and comfort will flow. Lord God, as long as I'm holding on to you, I know. I'm going to be okay. God, I give you glory and honor and praise. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I may be seated. It was really nice to see Christy, Patrick. It's hard for me to say that because, you know. But uh, Janet was saying, you know, I remember when Christy was, was uh, just really young. When we first came, she was very young, and we did a passion play. And I remember how she just cried and cried and cried when we beat Jesus. Is that my beard? I'm, I may have to shave or get a longer. Amen. I don't know, I think that was Janet back there doing that, trying to disrupt me. But I, I, I just I thank God, you know, I, so y'all know that we are, uh, we are in the middle of a place right now, all the things that are going on. And I'm going to tell you, I want y'all to know that, that we have a God of, that, that, that brings peace. And it has been, this has been a very difficult week for me personally. Um, and I want y'all to know that God has met me. God gave me the title to my message Monday. Uh, and the title is, You Are Not Alone. If you'll open your Bibles up to Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. They should be putting on the board behind me. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. We're going to read in just a moment. I, I want to encourage y'all... We're going to have to get me a wireless if I can't walk. If I stand still, we'd be done pretty quick. But as we're processing, uh, if you are a member of the church or this is your church, whether you're a voting member or not, doesn't matter. Uh, for our annual business meeting, we're going to talk about kind of where we are as a church with the uh, building, our moving forward. I want you to know we have a plan and it is, it is moving forward. We will be back in our building. There's not a doubt about it. Y'all can be confident of that one thing, that we will be back in our building. Amen. There's not a doubt about it. Amen. Amen. Won't you get me a handheld mic, babe? Because I, I'm not, I hadn't even got started hollering yet. But I, but I want y'all to know that we do have a plan, and we are moving forward not as fast as I wish we were. But we are going to get there. I don't want y'all to feel, uh, I was talking to Brother John Bosman. How many of y'all remember Brother John Bosman? Anybody? Amen. Why don't you take that off of me? Deliver me from it. Yeah, twist it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm going to holler at y'all with this one for a while. Amen. So Brother John Bosman, I was talking to him on the phone. He's one of my mentors. Uh, he pastored in Lake Charles for years from South Africa. Everything he says sounds good. Got that British accent, brother. <laughs> and he said, well, how are you? I said, I'm doing, I'm doing good. He said, does your people know? I said, what? He said, Do your, does your people know you're doing good? I said, well, I guess. He said, tell them. He said, you tell them that you're okay. He said, you tell them that you're here, that you're going to be here, and that the devil has lost. You make sure they know that by you blue wins and the devil loses. I said, yeah, I can do that. So I just want to encourage you in case you were wondering. Uh, some of y'all know already. Some of y'all, we're going to be laying hands on uh, Brother T and Miss Stephanie next week. Uh, he has taken a position in our district at our campground. And someone said the other day, we know we had uh, Brother Todd and Sister Suzanne that have moved from our uh, SUM and Brother Brian and Miss Krista who's moved from the youth. And they said something must have happened. The only thing that happened is that God is moving his soldiers to other places. There is not a fight. There's not an upset. There's not a, 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 a boudet thing going on. Uh, that, that, they were, that they can walk away from me. It means we did it in good standing. Because I'll whoop them, they try to leave me, and that's a problem. But everything's good. God is just doing things. I don't know what all God's doing, but I'm telling y'all, it's good. And you need to know, Sister Janet and I are committed to being here. I have been asked to leave, not by our people. Now, that, that was kind of the wrong way to say it. I was asked about leaving and going somewhere else, and I smiled and said, nope. 29 years ago, I knew this is where God called me to be, and I have that as much assurance of that today as I did then. And so I want y'all to know that y'all don't, don't wonder or worry what's going on. God's going to bring the right people for the right moment. Uh, I have friends that have volunteered to come and work for free if I need them. They some beasts too. And so we're good. We're going to be okay. And I want you to know that. I want you to know that we are not alone in our situation. It doesn't matter where you're at or what you're going through. You are not alone. Amen. And so I want to read my scriptures on preach. I'll get on time in a minute. Okay. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is... He it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all of Israel, be strong and of good courage, for thou must go with this people into the land which the Lord has sworn unto your fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doeth, doth go before thee, he will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Father, I thank you for your word. I ask that, Lord God, you would let me speak what you have put upon me, that you would touch the heart of the hearer. Father, I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I love, the, I love the Old Testament. I know a lot of people don't preach out of the Old Testament because they say, well, we're in the New Testament, so we're going to preach out of that. But, but man, the Old Testament tells us about what God is capable of. It shows us a, a God that deals with people who are hard-headed. And I relate to that. I relate to being hard-headed people. I relate to, to, to being one of those that God's got to shake me a little bit and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you. And so when I, when I see how he, he dealt with the Israelites, I say, you know, that makes me feel better about me because, you know, they was a little hard-headed too. But they were still God's people. How many of y'all glad you can still be God's people and, and be a little hard-headed? a matter of fact, I can tell you with all my heart, I would rather have somebody that's a little hard-headed than somebody who's easily pushed around. Right? Amanda, y'all know Amanda, my daughter. She is... I was going to say a little hard-headed, but that's not true. That girl has a, a strength inside of her that when she feels like she's right, you can't back her up. I like that. 
I like that about, about the, the people of God, that, that when we know we're in the right, that there is no backup to us. We're not going to sit back and allow the enemy to, to run into our, our homes and run into our, our families and, and rip away the, the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. And so here uh, God spoke, speaks to Moses and says, I want you to prepare Joshua because I want you to know that like I have been with you, I'm going to be with him. Can I tell you that that's what God says from generation to generation for us to understand that, that the God that was with the old folk, amen, the God that was with the generation that was before us who were the leaders and the warriors and, and the pastors and the deacons and the teachers and God kept the church going and moving Moving forward all this time. It's that same God that is stirring among us right now. There is a God and a power that is living inside of our church. Y'all, that's why we believe in discipleship and that's why we're working on reaching another generation with the power of Almighty God because there has to be a group who's coming up behind us and we need to teach them not by word but by action that I do not need to be afraid afraid of what they might do. I don't need to worry about what the devil might do. Matter of fact, if there's going to be somebody worrying in this relationship, it's going to be the devil about me because greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Be strong and courageous. I want to tell y'all today, you need to be strong and courageous. I know that we are going through many battles, but do not be turned aside by the war of the enemy. Do not let the things that are going on cause you to turn away from what God is calling you to. It does not matter what's going on on the outside as long as God lives on the inside see it doesn't matter what the devil's going to do and that's what he said he said Joshua do not be afraid of the battles that are ahead can I tell you we're all going through battles this has been probably not probably this has been the worst season in my life it has been the worst season in my life. Start, I mean, I told my, some leaders in our fellowship the other day, I said, you know, how bad is it when you're wishing it was 2020 again? <laughs> Looking for the good old days. But you know what? It doesn't matter what the devil does. Because I'm going to win. You know how come I know I'm going to win? Because I will not quit. I will not stop. I won't turn around. I won't, I won't second guess what God called me to do. I've done come too far to turn around and go home. And so here I see, I see in Joshua this, this fear of, of I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And you know, you, you watch the news and you just don't know what's going to happen. It looks like the whole world is going crazy. And you think, you know, it's never been this bad before. Yes, it has. It has been this bad before. We forgot because God's blessings came back on us. And maybe it was in a generation before you can remember. But you find those folks who lived long enough ago. And you ask them if they remember how bad it was. How bad it was during the depression. How bad it was when, when the, the flu came through and killed millions of people. Ask them how bad it was in World War I, in World War II, how they didn't have the money that they needed to buy stuff. And if they had the money to buy it, they couldn't get it anyway because it didn't have it to give. Let me tell you, it's been bad before, but the same God that delivered them and brought them and built them is the same God that we serve today. Do not allow the enemy to make you think that somehow we're worse than they were. It's worse off now than it was then. The only thing that's lacking is a backbone in the church today to stand up and say, I don't care what it looks like. And I don't care what the devil says. It doesn't matter what's going on on the outside because I walk by faith and not by sight. I will not be turned around. Greater is he. My God is on my side. I will not fear. I will not allow fear to cause me to stumble and fall away. I'm not going to look at the things that are going on and allow myself to become dismayed and say, God, where are you? 
God, what, what have you done? God, I don't like this situation. Can I tell you, we preach it all the time and we say it all the time. We talk about a sovereign God. Oh, I serve a sovereign God. That word sovereign means he can do what he wants to do and he knows what I don't know. Now, come on, somebody. God, God knows what your tomorrow is. God knows what's going to go on in your tomorrow. you got to trust him in today. You gotta lay that on him. Y'all, we can't worry about what's gonna be tomorrow. Sufficient is the evil of today. We don't have to worry about tomorrow. We need to be on the line fighting now. There is a generation that's waiting to see somebody who's willing to go to war and die for what they believe spiritually speaking. Somebody that's willing to say, I don't care what the enemy says and I don't care what you see. It doesn't matter what people say. My God is God. My God never changes. He did it then. He'll do it now. He'll do it tomorrow. All he's waiting on is somebody that'll stand up and say, God, I I receive that. God, I receive that. I'm going to walk in that. I'm going to talk in that. I'm going to war like that. I'm not going to back away because there are promises that I'm getting a hold to. And I'm not going to let the enemy rob me of my promises because God has already given me his word. Oh, and I can tell you this. There may be some folks you can't trust. God's not one of them. If you have a promise in the Word of God, you stop looking at your problem and you start looking at the promise. Because as long as your eyes are on the promises of God, the devil can't take them from you. It's when you start looking at your problem and you start thinking more of the problem, that's when the devil comes in and begins to rob you of that promise. I will not be a victim of the devil. Oh, let me tell y'all something. One day I'm going to die. And that is not a victory for the devil. That is a victory for me. I'm going to graduate from this world into heaven and I'm going to stand before my Savior and my faith's going to become sight and I'm going to look at my Savior and I'm going to hear the words, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's, that's my goal in life. In my walking with God, in my, my service of God, I want to hear God say, well done. And in order to hear that, I can't let fear rob me of my faith. Yeah, we're living in desperate times, but they're not desolate. I, I'm, I'm not kicked away or forgotten. I'm not in a place uh, of despair because I don't know where to go. And no matter how bad everything around you is, if you will settle yourself and stop what you're doing and begin to glorify God, I'm going to tell you peace that passes understanding will show up. Just the other day, Thursday, in the middle of chaos, in the middle of, of Cain understands, a peace flooded that place. A peace that doesn't come from understanding, a peace that comes from the presence. The presence of God shows up, and, and I, don't, I can't tell you anything except this. When God showed up, peace showed up. The problem didn't change. Hurt didn't change, pain didn't change, but peace showed up. I'm going to tell you something that's real. It's as real as the air you're breathing, the chair you're sitting in. The God that we serve is more real because he's eternal. The air you breathe will burn away someday and the chair will rot to nothing. But the God that we serve is from eternal to eternal. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He was, he is, and he will be. Before there was anything, there was God. I'm telling y'all, we have a God that cannot lie. We have a God that cannot fail. All we need to do is trust him and not allow fear or dismay to get a hold of us. You may say, but pastor, I don't know how I'm going to get through this situation. It's beyond me. It doesn't matter. You don't have to know how you're going to get through it. You need to know who's going to get you through it. Come on, somebody. 
I don't need to have a plan that goes from point A to point Z. There's a lot of turns I've made, Brother Wayne, that, that I didn't think I'd make. There's a lot of direction God brought me I never even thought about when I got started. I just didn't want to go to hell anymore. I wanted to live my life different because I was tired of paying the price for the sins I'd been committing. And, and I just said, God, if you keep me from, from dying and going to hell, I'd, I'd, be, I'd, I'd appreciate that. He did so much more than that. He gave me a life and a hope. He gave me a future I never dreamed about. He brought me through things that I could not have imagined. He has set me up in places and he has given me favor with people that I could not have imagined I ever would have. God opened doors that I never thought would be open to me. And there are still times when I sit back and I look and I think, wow, can you believe that God let me do that? And in the last few weeks, probably the last three weeks, I've had two different people give me a word from God and said, Packy, God just wants to remind you that you hadn't seen anything yet. You hadn't come to the end of what God brought you to. Remember what God promised you. You haven't seen that yet. Oh, come on, y'all. I hadn't seen what God promised. Have you seen the end of it yet? If you hadn't, then there is still time. God's still going to do something. Don't you let the devil tell you that you disqualified God's word. You don't have have more power or more authority than God does and if God said it and if you can just repent and turn back to where you need to be it doesn't matter how much you messed up all you need to do is trust God and God will change the things around you he will change the heart inside of you God will talk cause the hard places to become soft the high places to become flat he'll cause the deep places to settle out God has a way of bringing you to where you need to be but you got to trust him in this don't be afraid don't be dismayed God has called us to win the promises. Y'all, there is a lost and dying world outside the walls of this church that needs to see a real church, needs to see a people who love God. They need to see people who are not just Christians on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon or, or Wednesday, but people that are Christians when they're at the house, in the backyard, when they're at work, when they're with their friends, when they're at a restaurant somewhere. They need to see that there are people who love God. God and what causes so many people to fall is fear fear that they're not good enough fear that they won't be able to, to, to sustain fear that other people will judge them fear that other people won't stand with them fear that other people won't believe in them I'm telling you we need to shake off the worry about what other people might think and we need to start worrying about what God thinks See, it's more important for us to know what God thinks about us than anybody else. Because if, if you think I'm great and God says I'm not, guess what? I'm not. And I want God to be pleased with me. I, I found out a long time ago, though, that when, when, I, when God blesses me and God's pleased with me, a lot of folks not. There's times when you'll take a stand that, that God told you to take that people will get mad at you. That's a good place for an organ sound right there. You start doing what God wants you to do and see how people will start judging you. People ask me questions. Now they ask me, I didn't go talk to them about it. And then they start getting mad at me. Oh, I guess you're going to judge me then. I said, for what? Well, because you know I live that way. I said, I don't have a clue how you live. I had a preacher in town text me, wanted to know if, if I thought he was a Calvinist. Oh no. I said, I've never heard you preach. I haven't listened to you on purpose. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that one. I said, I said, dude, I got to be honest, I've never heard you preach. Oh, uh, well, someone said, I said, well, whoever it is, go tell them you're a liar. Because <laughs> I I said, I could say I don't think you're much of a prayer. I don't know your doctrinal beliefs. Well, I'm not a Calvinist. I said, well, good for you. <laughs> Me either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 
let me stop. But people get mad at me when, when, I, when I talk about my faith in God and I talk about that we ought to be living holy lives. Can I tell you, folks don't want to live holy. They don't want to live a life separated from the world. They want to be left alone. How many of y'all remember my sign in front of the old church? It's gone. But on that sign, we put holiness to hell, baby. I got some negative response from that. Why you got to put that on there? I said, because that's what the Bible says. Without a holiness, no man shall see God. I, be I believe that. I believe that, that if we're not living a holy life, we're not going to heaven. And when people are living a sub-holy sub life and, and the church says, oh, well, don't worry about that. Just pay your tithe. Man, y'all's money can perish with you. Keep your money. I don't care. I, I, I've worked most of my life. I ain't scared to get a job. We can't pay the bills because I preach the truth. That's the way it'll be. Y'all probably fire me by then. But, <laughs> but I'm going to preach the truth. Because that truth's going to make people free, amen? And we have to know that. We have to do that. And so, so I'm just determined that I'm not going to worry about their people who don't like the truth preached. You know, I've shared with you, and I've had people tell me, I mean, they tell me face to face, I'm not coming here anymore. I said, well, okay, why? Because you're against everything. I said, well, no, I'm not. Uh-huh, I can't go to Mardi Gras, I can't go to bars. I said, well, that ain't me. That's what the Bible teaches. Well, yeah, but other preachers don't say that. <laughs> I said, well, hey, enjoy your life. You know, go, go, go there. That's like people think that church ought to be like Baskin Robbins. 31 wonderful flavors. Just whichever one you want. I'm the dark chocolate. Not real sweet. Hebrews 13, give you time to turn there. Hebrews 13, verse 5. So, so, so we're in this process that, that, that I'm trying to, to be courageous and, and I'm trying to be what, what God wants me to be. How many of y'all have ever battled that place in your life? You know what God's leading you into, but, but it's kind of hard because the people around you don't agree with you. You know, when my mom started going to a, to a Pentecostal church, it, it stirred something inside of my daddy. It was the, the devil that was living there. And so she got, he got upset because she was going to a Pentecostal church where people were talking in tongues. And he told her. He said, that's the devil. She said, well, I served the devil for a long time. And he never let me speak in tongues. Went to church, got, got saved, started speaking in tongues. I don't know that the devil gave it to me. So you can't worry about what they're going to say. It says in Hebrews 13, 5, Let your conversation be without covetedness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So, so here's that, that process. So, so, so many times, especially in America, we, we equate God and blessing to money and stuff, right? I, I want the latest stuff. Isn't that amazing? How, how, how many of y'all remember when you first got married and you had a little place and, and, you, and you had all your stuff in it? And then you moved to another place that was bigger and you had to buy more stuff to fill it up, Right? And your kids grow up and they buy stuff and put it in your house. And then before long you either buy a bigger house or you get a, you get a, a storage container to put more of your stuff in. And we keep getting stuff. And I don't want to throw my stuff away because I got good stuff. You know, I want my stuff. And so we got us a thrift store now, we'll take all your stuff. <laughs> and we'll sell it and make money for missions. And we'll see lost souls saved. And, and have, but, you know, we, how many of y'all know some, most of y'all got too much stuff? And I said, y'all, because I need my stuff. <laughs> no. My stuff's expensive. I don't buy junk no more. 
but, but, but I see that it says not, not to be covetous, not to want other stuff and not be looking for, for well, if, if, I, if I had a church like Brother Steve does, man, we could do great things for God. Right? Oh, if I had the worship team, man, if, if I could sing like Sister Janet, man, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be world renowned. If I, if I had the, the planning, of, if I could have the, the, the people show up like they have, if I had all the breaks that the other churches had, man, we could do great things for God, but, but we need to get the right equipment and we need to get the right building and we need to get the right programs. You know what we need? We need the Holy Ghost. That's what we need. It's with the Holy Ghost I'm able to do what God wants me to do. And you can draw people with a, with a light show, but you can't get them to beat the devil down with a light show. You're not, you're not going to overcome demon-possessed people. You're not going to lay hands on the sick. You're not going to walk into the valley of the shadow of death and be able to come out on the other side with, with the wounds and the scars saying, Blessed be the name of God. I don't care what it looks like till you get a hold to a little deeper walk with God. It doesn't matter about all that other stuff. I don't want a bigger church. I want more saints warring against the devil wherever we can do that. But it's to let people know, you know what, I may not have everything that you think I ought to have, but I got God on my side. Jesus is my helper. You see, that's what I can have confidence in understanding that it doesn't matter what, what obstacles are in front of me. It doesn't matter how impossible this situation may look because Jesus is my helper, amen. He's the one who shows up when I don't know what to do. He's the one when, I, when I'm straining and I'm pushing trying to get that old Rock, rock moving and I can't seem to move it but I've given my last ounce of strength Jesus walks over and pushes the rest away but see he ain't gonna push it while you sitting there saying I wish somebody come move this boy if I had somebody to move this I could do some great things for Jesus we, we want great things but we don't want to work for it can I tell you lazy don't live with God you ain't going to serve God and do great things and be lazy. <laughs> I, I, I'm so thankful for our SUM cohort. For the way that we do ministry. Our ministry staff aren't lazy. Matter of fact, I put our staff up against anybody. I got to go into a fight with y'all. I'm bringing my staff with me because they roll up with you. They ain't quitting. You know, one of the things that I was talking to a pastor the other day, and he said that when he interviews new ministers who are going to, he's talking about hiring on his staff, he will leave paper around the church on purpose. And he'll walk them through the church, show them everything. If they don't pick the paper up, he won't even consider their resume. <laughs> Sister Connie, my daughter, told me one time we were walking across the parking lot somewhere else, and as we got, she reached down and started picking up the paper. I said, what are you doing? She said, I hate Miss Connie. <laughs> I said, what? She said, I can't walk past paper without picking it up because of her. Because she taught her, it's on the ground, pick it up. You know, one day Miss Connie left some paper right there by the church door. It was, it was there for a few weeks. And one day I said, you know, Connie, I have been watching that piece of paper, seeing if anybody picked it up for the last two weeks. She said, me too. We both was testing each other, didn't even know it. I think Amanda finally picked it up. But people don't want to put, they don't want to put their selves in. They want it to be easy. That's why drug addicts go back to drugs. That's why cheaters go back to cheating. That's why liars keep lying. It's just easier. Nobody wants to do the hard things because it, it's hard. I'm going to tell y'all, you know what quitters do? Yeah, they quit. We need to decide, is what we believe true or not? I mean, if God's real or he's not real, I mean, it can't be both ways. He either he is or he isn't. Isn't that what Elijah told the people? Hey, how long y'all going to stand on one side of this or the other? 
If God's God, serve him. If not, serve the other gods. But find you a God and serve him. I'm going to tell you something. You need to make a decision. If God's God, serve him. If he's God, listen to him. If he's God, fight the good fight. It doesn't matter how impossible it might look to you. If God said fight, go fight. If God said stand, you stand. If God said move, pack your bags and move. But do what God said do with everything inside of you. I told y'all, was it last week or week before last? I don't remember. Someone asked me if I was, well, you know, you're going to stay with everything that's happened. I said, dude, you ain't never been in a fight with me, have you? He said, what you mean? I said, I don't quit in the middle of a fight because you'd know that if you fought me because I'd be gnawing on your ankle. You knock me on the ground, I ain't quitting. I'm going to either keep getting up or I'm going to find a way to cheat to get you down. I ain't quitting. And I'm going to tell you all right now, people say, I beat you in a fair fight. Well, you ain't getting a fair fight. I'm going to do everything I can to beat you. We get into a fight, I I ain't trying to be polite. I ain't trying to be polite with the devil. Huh, T. Percy, come on. That's down to buy you. You don't don't think you're going to fight a fair fight with T. Percy. He'll say, well, hang on, let me put this down. Oh, yeah? Hey, I'm going to tell you, if you're going to get into a fight, you ought to try to win. Right? I'm talking about the devil, not people. Now, so I see somebody going to hear, they going to get it after church. Pastor said, no. I'm talking about the devil. And some people are smiling too much out there. We're going to fight, we need to fight the devil. We need to make a decision that if God's on our side and he's our helper, I can boldly say, my church is going to get fixed again because God's helping me. I can boldly say God's going to fill that building up and I'm going to build the next building God gave me before COVID ever happened. Because I can boldly say God is my helper. When people say, how are you going to pay for that? I'm going to say my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the hills they graze on. Oh, come on, somebody. We have a God that cannot be defeated. Now, you can't just decide, fairy tale dust, I'm going to do this. You know, if you, if you have a, 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 I won't say a fantasy, but that's where we're going to get to. You have a, a thing that you want, and you say, oh, God, I'm going to be a worldwide minister, and I'm going to preach the Word of God, and you don't read your Bible but once a week. You are so, I was going to say, I almost said it too, so deceived. I was going to say dumb, but that's mean. If you think you're going to be able to preach the Word of God around the world and you don't read the Word of God but every now and then, come on. You know, you think, well, I'm going to have a great prayer ministry, but you won't pray more than three minutes a day? I'm waiting on God to get me jump-started. Well, come see me after church. I'll jump-start you. We need to make some decisions in our hearts. See, when I I talk about the things that God has put in my heart, I got plans. I know how I'm getting through part of this. And I know where I ultimately want to be. I know that, that God has put in my heart. We didn't buy 30 acres of land to sit there and watch grass grow on it. And I want to buy 10 more acres over there. First chance I get, I'm going to. I want that Elks Lodge and I want everything attached to it. I want to be able to build me dormitories back there. I want to have over 50 full-time students. I want to have a team together that is educating and pouring the anointing of the power of a holy Pentecostal message into young people, middle-aged people, and old people. I don't care what they come student-wise to the church. I want them to come and I want them to be educated because I'm going to tell you something that I have in my heart to do is reach the gospel and I know I can't go everywhere and do everything but every student that we raise up every student that we empower every student that we send out is me going with them it's you going with them it's what God has called us to do becoming true that's that's the vision that's the heart that's the desire y'all I will never in my life accomplish what God has called me to do. But I will have people ready to hand that baton to who will keep running the race until Jesus blows that trumpet and says, time to come home. 
If he did it today, I'd be great. If he waits 100 years, that'd be great. There's too, how many of y'all know people need to get saved? There's too much work to do to quit now, y'all. But we need to be able to boldly say, God is my helper. Going through difficult times, but God is my helper. How are you going to navigate all this hurt and all this pain? God is my helper. I can boldly declare that I may not know how, but I know who. I may not understand the why, but I know the when. When God shows up, things are going to change. And I don't care. I don't have to have what you have. I don't have to have what some other church has. I don't need some other thing to get me to where I need to be. All I need is the promise of God and the faith to hold on to it. That's what we have to have, y'all. You know, Romans second Romans eight twenty six. Some of y'all quoting it right now, can't even turn to it. Romans eight twenty six. I'm gonna tell y'all this is a scripture that I hold on to. How many of y'all hold on to that? Some of y'all going, I, I don't know, maybe I know it. It says And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Okay. Recognize, that was 28, wasn't it? That's my bad. Sorry. I corrected it on my notes. I know that all things work together for good to who? It doesn't... All things don't always work together for your good when you're full of the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had I had my younger brother one time was at my house and it's been several several years ago. Amanda was still in a school in uh probably she was probably in in the seventh or eighth grade, and he was there visiting and we were sitting around talking about the Bible, and he said to me, "You're lucky that God made me the drug addict and not you." I said, huh? He said, yeah. He said, God made me this way and made me walk. He said, the Bible says the steps of a just man are ordered by God. I said, but you ain't a just man. I said, you've been so full of the devil all your life, boy. I know you. I know what you. He said, you did bad stuff. I said, I know. We did a lot of that stuff together. How come I know? I said, God didn't make you do any of that. He said, well, it makes me a a witness offshore. I said, no, it don't. It makes you a joke. Those guys know what's real. He said, well, you should have. I said, I did. I got saved working offshore. I said, where have you been? We live in the same, we grew up, mom and same mama, same daddy. Where have you been? I I lived all of that, did all of that. God didn't lead me down that path. I went away from God down that path. And my life wasn't working out for my good. I was was headed to Angola, not to preach. My daddy told me when I was 18 years old, he said, son, if you don't do something now, you're going to wind up in Angola. Because I was just so dumb. I mean, some people are are good, they're, they're, they're thoughtful sinners. I was just a dumb one. I never considered the consequences of what I was doing. You know, I could tell y'all too many stories about that, but I'm not going to. It serves no purpose. Just know this, that just because you're doing something don't mean God wants you to do it. Oh, you, I can't wait, Brother Ray, one day I'm going to have a great testimony I keep on doing this. No. You get saved one day. God can turn this around for your good. God can take what the devil intended to kill you, and he can turn it to something good for you. But don't you think all the evil you're doing, that oh, I'm just giving God a good, good chance to have a great testimony. No, you're not. You're letting the devil lead you down a path that you may never come back from. You've know, got to be careful. you got to be careful. But, but all things do work together to those who love God. Now, I'll just give y'all a real quick test, right? How do you know if you love God or not? 
You keep his commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So if you're not keeping God's commandments, you don't love him. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to have to have a meal. Janet's playing an organ on that thing up there, but she don't want to stand up the whole time I'm preaching. (laughs) Had to get her a little tape recorder. Mm -hmm. But, But when people tell me, oh, well, I know... I know that, you know, I'm out here doing this, and, and, and I love God, but, but I really love sleeping around, too. You know, and, and so, so as long as I love God and go to church on Sunday, it shouldn't matter what I do the rest of the week, right? Mm-mm. It does matter. It, it matters. You say, well, you know, I only lie when it helps me. I know, pe- the pe- I know people would rather climb a tree and tell a lie than stand on the ground and tell the truth. They just like to lie. And they're always getting in trouble. But you know what? Brother Ray has a saying. It's hard to get lost on a straight road. This is impossible. <laughs> but it's hard. Hey, some folks find a way. But I'm going to tell you, you can't, you can't go around being, oh, well, I love God, but I have to lie about this because people get mad. That's right. You're going to have to make a decision. Either you're going to have to tell the truth and let them get mad. But you do it in love. Not like some of those folks that like to spit in people's eye and tell them how rotten they are. I just told them the truth, Pastor. And they got all the feelings hurt. So well, it's probably because you were stomping on their toe physically when you told them. Had someone tell me one time, said, well, people are, people are jealous of my anointing and the power of God in my life. I said, no, they don't like it because you're a jerk. They were all shocked and stuff. Like they don't know they a jerk. How many of y'all people, oh, never mind. When my wife tells me I'm being a smart mouth, I already knew it. I didn't need her to tell me. <laughs> I'm fully aware of my mouth. But she's trying to help me with that a little bit. But all things work together for good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Not your purpose. His purpose. Sometimes God will call you to do something you don't want to do. See, if you're not doing it according to his purpose, everything's not going to fall to your, to your good. You're going to get yourself in a bind because you're not doing what God told you to do because it was too difficult. It's too hard. Nobody will help me. I don't have to have you help me. Jesus is my helper. I'm going to do what he told me to do because I want to be according to his purpose. I want to be doing the things that I do. You know what? You may have delusions of grandeur that God's going to lift you up and make you a great something until you break that mold and decide you don't have to be anything. God can't use you until you're willing to be used for anything. If you can't clean a toilet, we don't need your help. I had somebody one day, it's been several years ago, we were in the middle of service. I was getting ready to go preach, and somebody came and said, Pastor, the toilet stopped up. What do I do? So I walked into the bathroom, took a plunger, and I plunged it. They said, well, I didn't want you to do that. I said, well, I'm confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you, you asked me what to do, and I showed you. Well, I thought you'd tell me to go find somebody. To plunge a toilet? I mean, you know, if there was an electrical issue, I'd say find an electrician. I mean, I didn't plunge the toilet. You know, and I'm going to tell y'all, there's ne- I've never asked anybody in our church to do anything I was not willing to do. But if I do it one time, then it's their time every time. They- no. But, I, you know, but people, people say, well, oh, we can't. I, I don't, I'm the pastor. I don't do those things. I laugh at people like that. I do, I'm telling you, I laugh at them. And it makes them mad, and they're not my friends no more. But I'm okay. I got lots of friends. Okay. But y'all, if you want all things to work together for your good, then you have to love God. You have to live your life according to His purpose, not yours. You know, you can't say, "Okay, God, when you do this, I'll do that." Don't work that way. Okay, God, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And you know what? I have discovered after thirty-two years of full-time ministry I have discovered that I'm still nothing it's all about Jesus 
No matter how big our church gets, no matter how much we reach, I have people come in and, oh, pastor, you're, you're the, they, they, start, they start telling me stuff, you know, and, and I just laugh. They say, what? I said, you don't even know me. I said, that ain't me. I said, I'm just, I'm just Patrick. I said, all these accolades, that's God. I said, the people God sent to our church who had got a hold of the vision. It's, it's the people who don't have a lot, but they gave some of it anyway. We do, we do missions all over the world, not because I'm a great money taker. How many of y'all have ever seen me take an offering? A couple of y'all? I, I, I don't do good taking offerings. I, I, you know, it's just I'm not gifted. I, boy, if I was Gary Sapp, boy, I have y'all crying every Sunday. Get, get all y'all's money. Just ain't my thing. I believe that God's going to put on people's hearts. And if they like the vision of the church, they're going to give to it. If they know what we're doing, they're going to say, hey, I want to be a part of that, Pastor. I don't beg for money. I didn't beg for money when there was no money, and I wasn't making more. <laughs> I just don't because I trust God. I'm not going to do that. And, 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 and we need to remember that we are who God called us to be. You know, we have great potential sitting right where you are. In the very seat you're sitting in is the greatest potential to win the world for Jesus that there's ever been. Right there where you're sitting. Because it's you. You have the potential to do great things for God if you're willing to say yes. You know? I remember we got back from Africa and Corey and Katie were, we'd give testimonies and he said that God just showed him that it's time for me to go deeper. It's time for me to do more. And I'm so proud of them and, and the remnant, the work that they're doing with the young adults. They're just, just such, such, just love God. But you know what? They had to make decisions in that point. We got some of that young group over there that have been discipled and love God and are called to more than just come to church. Some of you in here, you, you know there's something been burning in you for years, but you think, well, maybe it's too late or I don't know if I can. Well, I'm telling you, if you'll do it according to his purpose, everything's going to come together for you. Y'all, I, I, I should be dead. And I'm not being, I'm just not trying to be dramatic. I'm telling y'all, y'all call my mom and ask her. That I made it through my adolescence alive was a miracle. I run my mama's car off a bridge when I was 14 years old. Yeah, no, I wasn't supposed to be driving it, no. I have been hit, shot, stabbed, run over. I, I'm telling y'all, I it's just God. You know, matter of fact, you know, I, I, there's, there's, there's a silver lining in every cloud, right? I was at the church last week coming down the stairs and fell. <laughs> I got a, scar, got a cut on my leg. I laid on the ground looking up thinking, well, at least ain't no electricity. They couldn't film it. <laughs> I was hurt, but I, found, I laughed about that. Oh, because if it had been electricity, I guarantee you Justin Gittery would have had it all over the uh, Internet. <laughs> He'd been laughing at me. So, you know, but I'm telling y'all, God has kept me safe. And I've been able to use the things that I went through as a kid, the pain, the hurt, being shot, to minister to people that didn't have hope who'd been shot. People that didn't know they could get through it, they got through it, because I was able to say, look at me. Relatively speaking, I'm normal. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. 2 Timothy 1.7, I got to hurry because I, I lingered too long. 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. You can come, Jan, I'm getting ready to close. I want you to understand that Paul is writing to Timothy. He said, Timothy, when I think about you, and I think about the faith that you have, I'm reminded of your grandmother and your mother. And I'm reminded of, of what I saw in them that I see in you. Can I, can I tell you, you can see that in people. You know, Wednesday, Megan's service, her, her homegoing service would be here. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I saw in her a, a faith that I saw in her grandpa. And I've seen in her mom and dad. 
that I see in her brother. A faith that is from the generations of loving and trusting God. It was in her. You see that? See, God stirs up those things inside of you, but God didn't give us a spirit of fear. I know we're going through difficult times and fear wants to grip you, but God didn't give you that spirit of fear. Now, I'm not talking about a healthy fear of fire or a healthy fear of some yo-yo driving 100 miles an hour down the highway. I'm talking about a spirit of fear that makes you afraid to take a chance on God. That spirit of fear that makes you want to hold back instead of letting go and let God do what He wants to do. There's a spirit of fear that comes on you causes you to panic in the middle of everything. Every time God will do some great thing for you, fear grips you and that spirit of fear shakes you and you just want to run and hide because you can't deal with it anymore. God didn't give that to you. He said, God didn't give you the spirit of fear. And, and it's important that we, the church, hold on to that and, and understand that that right now is our time. And that spirit of fear that the devil has sent against us is because he's afraid of us. It's because he knows there's a stirring in the supernatural that is coming this way. I believe with everything inside of me that Homa is about to see a revival that has never been known before. I believe that. I believe that God is about to break strongholds that have been bonded and bonded to has kept people in bondage for many years. Not just a person, but generation after generation has been in bondage to lies and fear and, and garbage. And, and it's got a hold of them so much. But God's about to break loose. And the devil can sense. He don't know what God's going to do because he ain't God. He just sees a supernatural move coming this way. Y'all don't give up yet. Don't let go yet. Don't let fear come cause you to stumble but know this that God did give you power hallelujah he has given you a dunamis power an explosive power that in the middle of your war that he's given you the dynamite that you need to break the enemy's hold off of you he has given you the power and the authority to cast down demons and to cause the sick to be healed to speak to mountains to be plucked up and cast into the sea the power of almighty God has been loosed into the church loosed into you and into me he gave us the power and love he gave us a love that cast out all fear a love that looks beyond the outside of a person and reaches to the inside well, I'm going to tell y'all that early on in my life I could only see the outside of people only see what they look like on the outside was never able to look deeper than that but God gave me love God put something inside of me that has caused me to look beyond the outside color of their skin the clothes that they wear the art decoration on the body the piercings beyond the color of hair and God has given me a love that looks into the heart of somebody that's crying out, God, I need help. God, could you send somebody who would look past my pain and look into my heart and just love me? God, I just need somebody who will love me no matter what because, God, I've been so hurt so often and rejected so many times. I just can't take another chance. So I'm going to put up this hard shell. But God, I sure wish somebody would love me anyway. God has put it in us, the church. Love. The ability to love God's way. Totally given and not having to receive back. And a sound mind. Y'all, we ain't crazy. What, what God speaks to us is not crazy. Disobeying is crazy. Not hanging on to the impossible when God says it's possible. That's crazy. He's given us a sound mind. 
That's why all of a sudden we're able to believe for the impossible. Because now we have the mind of Christ. Now I have washed away by the washing of the water of the word I've renewed my mind and I'm no longer stuck in old thinking but now I'm thinking outside of humanity's box and, and I'm looking over into the supernatural things of God and if I read it in the Bible and I see that God meant it and he says to me I want you to walk in this then I know that I know inside of me that I am able to let go of everything in this world and I can trust God I can believe God that in the middle of a storm I can have peace because I have peace that passes understanding I want you to understand that today He didn't give you fear but power and love and sin. that's what God's given us now we're not alone He didn't bring you out of this world and put you somewhere if you think you're by yourself you're deceived he promised he'd never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be honest, there's been times I've gone through some valleys that I felt alone. I couldn't talk to my family about it. Couldn't talk to other people about it. Not because I didn't want to, I just didn't know how to. Maybe you've been in a place where I just don't know how to explain what I'm going through. Now people will understand and not just tell me I'm crazy or selfish or foolish you know sometimes I just need I just need to be able to express and, and I've gone through those times and I thought nobody would understand I can't I can't be weak I, I can't let it look like I, I'm not strong enough I know that's a man dumb man thing but I, I but I, I mean, I, I'll just be honest. I walked in that place for a long time where I felt trapped in that. I had to, I couldn't be affected. I couldn't uh, show that I was struggling. But I'm going to tell y'all something. I will never be sorry that I ran to my father and poured myself out. Because I found out that Jesus was there the whole time. He was walking stride for stride. He said, son, you don't have to be strong because I am. You, you want to rest a little while? Look, right here in the presence of all your enemy, I'll set you a table. You go ahead and sit down. And you get you some food. I'll watch for you. You go ahead and rest. You build your strength up a little bit. And then God taught me that he is my strength. My ability to stand up and do, and I'm going to tell y'all, I am strong physically. Physically, I am a strong dude. But you know what? Strong people cave under the pressure all the time. That's not, that's not how you win this. It's your physical strength. We win this by our faith and trust in God. It doesn't matter who you are. If you'll just trust God, you'll get through it. God will never leave you or forsake you. He is your helper. He is the one. Sometimes we just need to get broke before him again. But we got to remember, we're not alone. You're not alone. Doesn't matter what you're going through, you're not alone. God's there with you. There are people around you that love you. We live in, we have a church here full of people who love Jesus and love each other. I am so proud to be the pastor of this church. You people. I watch y'all pour love out on, on, on the Quick family. I watch this church pour themselves out to love. Miss Talisa. All the prayer, the, the just the praying for my little brother Neil. So proud to be a part of this church. Because this church cares. We have love for one another. God didn't give us to be here with the power of love and sound mind. And you look across this congregation on a Sunday afternoon from 2 uh, o'clock to 3 30. And you see a good, strong church. I have a lot of my friends that I tell them what we're running. They say, oh my goodness. What were you running? I said, more. But you know what? This, we're healthy. And we're going to do what God called us to do. It's not we're not by ourselves. We're not alone. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. My prayer team could come up very quickly. If you're in this room right now and you say, Pastor, I'm just going to be honest. 
in the middle of a crowded room, I do feel alone sometimes. I feel like nobody understands where I'm at or what I'm going through. I feel like nobody can feel the things I'm feeling, and, and I just don't know what to do. And I've been shaken by that, but, but this message today touched you. Why don't you slip your hand up and say, just pray for me, Pastor. Amen. I see the hands all over the building. I'm not going to call any of y'all out. Thank y'all. I just appreciate y'all raising your hands. Because you know what? That's a real feeling. It's, it's, a, it's a real struggle and a real battle. That's just standing here all across the building. Heavenly Father, you saw the hands of those that were raised. And God, you know. You know where their struggle is. You know where their battle is. I ask that, Lord God, your grace would just touch them right now. Father, I ask that you would let them feel your very presence in the middle of their storm. Lord God, I ask that you would speak to them in that small, still voice and that you would just call them. Call them to yourself, God. Let them know it's going to be okay. Father, I thank you and I praise you. Jesus' name. If you need God to touch you, if you'll come now, we'll pray with you and agree with you.